Hello, my name is Bob Hill, and I'm the superintendent of the Firelands Local School District. Welcome to our 2014 State of the Schools video. This video was created in an effort to inform our community of all of the great things that are happening in the Fireland Schools. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. And the quote for this year this is titled Teaching and Learning. It is, a student, it is a students themselves in the end, not teachers who decide what students will learn. Thus, we must attend to what students are thinking, what their goals are, and why they would want to engage in learning what is offered in schools. Learning is very personal to the teacher and to the student. That's from David Olson. That is something that we try to focus on here in the Fireland Schools, how personal learning is to our students. We try to personalize learning to their needs, to their desires, to help them achieve as much as possible. With that, I would like to show a brief video that highlights part of what we attempt to do here in Firelands. Finding a purpose in the work we do or the way that we spend our time which resonates deeply with who we think we are is an essential part of knowing who we are. That in a way, if you don't know what you can do, you don't really know what you might be. Your human talent, human ability, like the world's natural resources, is often buried deep. It's not just lying around on the surface. You have to go looking for it. And that's why I think so many people don't know what their talents are because they've never actually come upon them yet. One of the things that stops us doing what we might want to do is our own self-censorship. A fear that will fall flat on our face, that, well, you know, it, me, I'm not even entitled to it. A second, I think, is other people's attitudes, friends and family, often well-intentioned. There are all forms of tacit disapproval that, that prevent us moving forward. It can be the raised eyebrow of, of a friend, you know, or a, a group culture. What, you, seriously? What, you would do that? Oh, well, okay. Or cultural constraints about the roles of women or the communities. So I'm not trying to say that this is easy, but I'm saying it's essential and that there are things we can do, particularly in the systematic process that we put forward through education and organization of communities, that can assist it. You know, the, the old model is predicated on a particular view of intelligence and talent, and I think for the future we need to evolve systems of education and of organizational planning and of community development, which are based on a model of diversity rather than of conformity we still run our education systems as if life is linear. We run them as if it's mechanistic. This is one of the reasons so many things get phased out of education because people say, well, you'll never get a job if you do that. Education is not a mechanistic process and organizations are not mechanisms. You know, if you look at the management chart of most organizations, it looks like a wiring diagram. And it all kind of suggests that these are like mechanisms and they're not. Human life and human communities are much more like organisms in the sense that we flourish under certain conditions and we fade under certain conditions. And our success is always synergistic with our environment. It is about human flourishing. But it's also about recognizing that education and our communities are part of cultures and they're not independent and insulated from them. But at the heart of it, the elemental bit of it, is a different conception of human possibility. That finding your passion does change everything. The key, I believe, to that video is that we in the Fireland Schools seek to provide students with the ability to be innovative the ability to move forward, the ability to meet the standards associated with the 21st century education. The education paradigm has changed over the past five years. Students are no longer required to memorize rote issues, to know the state capitals, to be able to spit information back to you that is not relevant. Students are forced to think. Students are forced to act. Students are forced to work together to problem solve, to be innovative. That is something that we in Firelands are trying to do and trying to move forward with each day. The agenda for this evening is we will talk about the accomplishments of the Fireland schools, a facilities update, an enrollment update, and finance. 
which I will turn over for Mr. McCracken, our treasurer, to speak of. After Mr. McCracken speaks of finance, Mr. Von Gutten will speak about curriculum matters. Then we will answer any questions that might arise. Many accomplishments in the district this year. We met all 24 indicators, which gave us a grade of 100% or an A, as defined by the new Ohio State Report Card. Our performance index was 103.1, which was a .5 increase from last school year, giving us a grade of 85.9% or a B. That ranks us fourth of 14 public schools in Lorain County and 147th out of 610 schools across the state of Ohio. Very impressive numbers. The district, our annual measurable objectives, these are objectives that are set forth by the Ohio Department of Education. We achieved a grade of B on that with an 80%. District value added, and this is one that I'm very proud of, we received an A. Value added is essentially when a student walks into the door at the beginning of the school year, they have a certain amount of knowledge. By adding value to their education, we move them from point A to point B. The grade of A in value added means that we provided our students with more than one year's worth of growth in a year in most cases. Our five-year graduate, four-year graduation rate, I'm sorry, was 94.1% and A. Our five-year graduation rate was 93%, which is a B. As you can see, there's a slight difference in those two numbers, and that has to do with the mathematical formulas associated with the graduation rate by the state. Athletic accomplishments, many athletic accomplishments this year. We have approximately 300 students involved in athletics. This is our second year in the Patriot Athletic Conference. Our athletic director, Kenny Seawright, has done a fantastic job in conjunction with our high school administration, Mr. Reichley and Mr. Brown, in how allowing our kids to become more involved in the after school activities, in supporting their teammates, their classmates. Firelands High School finished with the third highest point total in the PAC All Sports Award for 2012 and 13 out of 12 teams. So again, we have a very good representation across the Patriot Athletic Conference. Accomplishments, high school girls basketball, 2013 PAC champions. Boys basketball, 2013 PAC champions. Track, 2013 PAC champions. High school softball made it to the Division II District Championship. Very impressive for us. We knocked off a perennial power in Keystone to make it to that game. High school boys soccer, 2013 PAC champions. Our eighth grade football team finished two years undefeated. Our boys track team in the middle school, PAC champions. Accomplishments again, high school boys cross country, PAC runner up. Volleyball, PAC runner up. High school baseball runner up and middle school wrestling runner up. I like to think of Firelands as having a triple A school district. Academics, arts, and athletics. This serves as a prime example of our prowess in academics. I'm sorry, athletics. More athletic accomplishments, and this is again a, a shout out and thank you to Mr. Seawright. We initiated an honorary captains program where we bring back captains from previous championship teams and honor them at basketball games. They speak to the team about successes in life and how to be successful. High school football team completed a community service project with all proceeds going to the Red Cross. We honored the 1973 girls basketball team and the 40th anniversary of Title IX with a reunion lunch and a halftime presentation at a girls basketball game. Food services, another very important aspect of our school district. We offer breakfast and lunch daily. This is thank you to Judy Bauman and all of her hard work. 37,569 breakfast meals served in 2012 and 13. 154,183 lunches served in 2012 and 13. That's approximately 4,800 meals per week. We offer a variety of vegetables from the five different subgroups and almost 100% of our grains are whole grain in conjunction with the government standards. We have vending and staff snack offerings that are compliant with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Please note that our food service program is self-supporting. There are no general fund dollars, no tax dollars that support that program. They do that themselves and do a very good job of it. 
transportation, some more interesting facts and accomplishments. Uh, Milt Saylor is in charge of our transportation department. We have 26 total buses, 19 of which run routes. We transport 1,635 students daily. We drive an average of 1,800 miles on a daily basis. In 2012 and 13, we drove 347,793 miles. Again, with a district the size of ours being 90 square miles, we have quite a bit of roadway to cover. Very impressive numbers. Firelands High School, I will now highlight our building achievements. Firelands received a B overall grade in the performance index and an A for the four-year graduation rate. The Oberlin Rotary, sponsored senior Elizabeth James to attend the 27th annual Community World Workshop at Defiance College for three days. Quite an honor for her. We hold our annual College and Career Readiness Day that occurred on October 16th. Our seniors visit colleges or job shadow. Our juniors take the pre-ACT. Sophomores take the plan. Freshmen listen to college and career speakers. And students participate in fundraisers for community service. More accomplishments. Our FS, FFA, as you know, is very, very renowned in the county and throughout the state. Our FFA parliamentary procedure team earned a third place at the National Invitational in Massachusetts. Agricultural education students over $750,000 through their supervised agricultural experiences. They logged more than 1,500 hours of community service. We had six members apply for state FFA degrees, one for Star State, two graduates applying for the American degree. And if you're not familiar with FFA, these are very um, high levels of honorary achievements that they can gain and apply for. Our FFA members wrote thank you notes to 134 local farmers. Mr. Reichley earned his honorary state FFA degree this year uh, at the convention in May. So quite an honor for Mr. Reichley. 2013 graduates earned over $35,000 in scholarships as a direct result of their involvement with FFA. So FFA is a very, very strong program here and we are very proud of it, our high school, and we thank them. More Firelands High School. In December, the Strive Club shopped and wrapped gifts for six families, sponsored by the Oberlin Rotary. Our Teen Leadership Corp is a very important group at the high school. They develop leaders through community service and leadership activities. They raised $1,300 for Kick It to fight juvenile cancer, another $1,960 for the Le Leukemia Lymphoma Society, collected 150 toys in December for the Cavs Toy Drive, so very involved in the community and trying to help those in need. Some academic things that have been added at the high school, we added dual credit classes, anatomy and physiology through LCC this year. This enables our high school students to earn both high school and college credit at the same time. Our vision is to eventually enable our students to leave Firelands High School with a handful of college credits. The more the better, it doesn't cost the parents, it's a great service that we provide to our community and to our students. South Amherst Middle School. They received a B on their performance index, the overall grade, and an A for value added. So again, reflecting back on the value added statement, we're very proud of South Amherst for providing more than a year's worth of growth each year to the majority of our students. We had multiple teachers who earned above average or most effective ratings according to their value added linkage scores. So again, that reflects back on the accomplishments and the strengths of our teaching staff and their ability to grow students more than a year in a year's time. Sam's was the cool school by Fox 8 Cleveland this year. That was a great experience for our students. We expanded course offerings this year at the middle school to earn high school credit for our eighth grade students. We expanded algebra, health, and art explorations. By adding those credits at the middle school level, we are freeing up our students to be able to take different and more varied classes once they get to the high school. Eighth grade students community service. We worked with the village of South Amherst and the cemetery board to provide spring maintenance to the Evergreen Cemetery. That was quite the event. Mr. Spagnola and I ventured out in the warm weather with our students and watched them put in some pretty hard work there at the cemetery. Created emergency kits for the Lorraine Homeless Shelter. 
The eighth grade conducted their first annual living museum that spotlighted American history. Again, our math counts received a gold ranking for the third year in a row. Our eighth grade students participated again in the mock trial held at the Elyria Justice Center. That is quite the event and something I would encourage people to visit if they ever have the chance. We are the first middle school in Lorain County to have an academic challenge team. Academic challenge team is quiz bowl in, in no uncertain terms and this is to provide our students with more opportunities to expand their knowledge and to compete against other schools. They will participate in the Erie County competition. Six endowment grants to the middle school totaling $7,971. That enables our teachers to buy uh, different things for their classrooms and initiate different projects to help student learning. Sixth grade service project fed 25 Firelands families at Thanksgiving and provided six $50 gift cards for needy families. So again, reaching out, trying to support our community. Our sixth grade received a grant for students to participate in activities by the Great Lakes Theater Company workshop program. As I said before, the eighth grade football team finished with a perfect 16-0 record on the two years. Eighth grade band attended Ohio Music Educators Middle School large group adjudicated events in May. That's a very impressive honor. And many of our, many of our middle school band members attended Lorain County's annual solo and ensemble adjudicated event in February. Firelands Elementary, some many accomplishments here too. The elementary received a B overall for the performance index on the new Ohio report card. They were awarded a $1,000 grant from the Nord Foundation to purchase nonfiction and informational text selections for students and staff. Awarded six iPads to classroom teachers for proposals written to enhance the learning process using technology. Adopted and implemented a new math resource called My Math. This provides students with access to interactive resources online and provides them with some valuable opportunities to grow inside and outside of the school. Technology, implementation of two computer carts that contain laptops for student use. Just another example of how we are attempting to provide 21st century opportunities for our students. Falcons on the Fly, a fabulous program where our students go out and they walk and, and exercise. We were able to put in a new path this past fall for the students. Thank you to the support of several of our community members donated their time to do this. We sincerely appreciate that. Elementary and Firelands community collected an estimated 500 toys as part of the Chronicle Telegram's Not Forgotten Box program. Toys were given to the Salvation Army to distribute more community outreach. Academic challenge. I believe we are the first and only school in the county at the elementary level to provide an academic challenge for our elementary students. Again, more opportunities to advance our students. We purchased 20 iPads this past year with Title I funding for our reading intervention. Some of you have heard of the third grade reading guarantee. This is one of our efforts to maximize our results in that area. The PTG had a record-breaking book fair this past fall, $11,000 in profits. Books were purchased for classroom libraries and for the main library. We have a great focus on reading here. This is part of that. Annual Spelling Bee was held last February. Quite an event if you ever get a chance to watch that. It's, it's inspirational to watch our small students spelling. Last spring, 15 fourth and fifth grade students performed with the Oberlin Choristers Children's Honor Choir. Another great event highlighting the talents of our students here at the elementary school. And thank you to Julene Woods for providing them with that opportunity in her program. The Lego Olympiad was held at the Lorain County Community College. We had 89 students, grades two through five, participate in the open theme and computerized divisions. Students and Legos are another fantastic thing. The creativity and innovation that Legos enable them to engage in is impressive. Community Foundation of Lorain County provided three grants to hold club invention after school. Fourth and fifth grade students participated in the Hour of Code this year. We actually had our students writing code on the computers. This was a national event. 
Fourth and fifth grade students will compete in Math Mania, a countywide math competition. It's a 24 turn event, and that's the math game that they play. It's a standards based math competition where children use clickers to respond to questions and are judged on their speed and accuracy, similar to Jeopardy. Again, very impressive to see small, young minds functioning in this way. Facilities, we did several things this past year. We are in the process of implementing a program called Navigate Prepared. This is an online program that provides our first responders, police, sheriff, fire, EMS, with access to our floor plans, to pictures of the rooms, to a complete layout of everything we have. If there were ever an event where they had to respond to us, they have that at their fingertips. We are one of the first schools in the area to implement this. Maybe the first, I believe. Tuck pointing and caulking at the high school. We installed a refurbished freezer unit at Sam's. Actually, we were able to get quite a deal from the Keystone schools, and it provided us a great opportunity to help expedite our services in the South Amherst kitchen. We put in a new baseball field fence. It was completed with a $25,000 project all through grants, donations, and fundraising. Not a single dollar came out of the general fund for this project. The softball field improvement, we worked with the South Amherst Rec Board, the Firelands Athletic Boosters, to put in a drainage tile project, improve the fields. I have to say we probably have some of the best fields in the South Amherst complex in the entire county and we've all done that outside of the general fund which we're very proud of. Some of our future planning, uh, we have roof maintenance every year for the district. Uh, that's something that you get with, with flat roofs. Uh, reconditioning of SAMS and FHS gym floors, again, something that you do every year to maintain those floors. We wrote a grant through the state of Ohio and received Mark's emergency radios. Those will soon be installed in each of the buildings. And the Mark's systems are essentially a direct link to our first responders. If an emergency situation does occur in the building, we now have a direct link to those first responders to engage in a quicker response time. Enrollment. Our enrollment has changed quite drastically over the past several years. This first slide demonstrates the enrollment by grade level. If you look at the red portion of the cone, that is our district resident enrollment. The blue portion of the cone demonstrates our district open enrollment. So as you can see, we have quite a bit of open enrollment in the district, which is indicative of us providing a quality education. We are attracting students from area school districts who want to be a part of the Firelands family. Unfortunately, our enrollment does continue to decline. As this slide demonstrates, in June of 2006, we had 2,997 students. As of um, December of 2013, we are sitting at approximately 1,700 students. The difference of this slide, same thing, the blue is the district enrollment, the red is the open enrollment. So as you can see, our district enrollment declines steadily over the years where our open enrollment has increased, again, indicative of us providing a good environment for teaching and learning. The other piece of that that needs to be recognized is without the open enrollment numbers that we have, our finances would not be on strong footing. The less students that we have in the district, the less funding that we get from the state, the less funding we have to run the schools. Open enrollment at this point is providing us with an excess of about a million and a half dollars a year from the state of Ohio, which enables us to efficiently run and effectively run the school district. At this point, I will turn it over to Mr. McCracken and he will provide you an overview of the district finances. We will then move on to Mr. Von Gutten and then take any questions. So with that, Mr. McCracken.